Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me. My name is Stacy Johnson, and I'm the owner and operator of SF Johnson Consulting and Construction Services. And in this video, uh, this is a part of a multi-part uh, series where we are discussing every sheet individually in a construction set, the architectural set, the structural set, and all of the MEPs. In this class, we'll be going over the uh, little portion of the specifications that are involved in that they have provided in this set and also uh, the typical construction schedule, how we read it, you know, uh, how we construct it, and, you know, just to go over some details. Okay, so this is the second sheet in our full uh, sheet, our Popeye's construction set, and this is the BR100. So it contains schedules and specifications, okay? So bidding requirements is what the BR stands for, and basically what they've done is giving you some of the information from the actual set of specifications. And so examination of site, exa uh, explanation to bidders, all the way through, uh, you know, things that you want to make sure you review. And again, these are all things that you would find in the uh, actual specifications, but they've just included things that, you know, that are important, you know, bidding requirements uh, that they want you to know. So they have also included it in the set of construction documents. So the most important one I like to see is the final payment and the AIA documents, what's required in order to get paid. That's very important and how the information needs to be presented to them. So this is a good set for that. So again, this is the BR100 bidding requirements, giving you information from the specifications. And then also it's giving you a breakdown of a TYP, which is typical typical construction schedule. So when anytime they include the word typical, that just means that every time they do something, they want to do it the same way. So they do it typical, they do it the same way, they don't want any variations, but of course, you know, things change. So what this represents is the construction schedule from beginning to end for the project. And so the way we read it, the columns are everything that is going to be done within each of the columns and then the amount of time they tell you it's going to take is the number at the bottom so in this case it's the amount of time and days that it is going to take them or they say it's going to take to achieve each of or the full scope of the items in each of the columns and so for our first one it's going to what they want it to take is one day to establish the construction schedule uh, the contractor receives notice to proceed and finalize all national account quotes and pre-construction meeting. They want all of those things to happen within one day. And so if we progress on contractor mobilization, order national account buyouts, they assume that that will take three days and on and on and on. And so they begin with basically mobilization paperwork type stuff. So then they go to the surveying, rough grading. And so you can look at each of the columns and see the progression as the project moves forward. Uh, what comes first, what comes second, and this is a good teaching tool too to show, you know, the progression of any project. What comes first? What do we do first? What are some of the things that we can do at the same time? And so they have created a typical construction schedule for this Popeyes as they work through each of the items. And again, the bottom number is telling us how many days it's going to take them to achieve whatever is in the column. And so when we get to, uh, if you do any project management courses, you know that you can, uh, really you need your detailed estimates in order to determine really to accuracy how long any of these scopes of work is going to take. So a good cost book will help you determine the man hours for each of these operations. And once we know how many man hours it takes to do whatever, then we can start to build the construction schedule and we know how many days it will take to build a put you know whether it's the framing or the roof finish from the estimate from a good estimate you should be able to determine the man hours it's going to take for everything within that estimate and so that's where you get these numbers uh, as accurate as possible by doing a detailed estimate for each of the operations within that and some of the things again you can do at the same time okay so that's building a construction schedule. And that's a separate class.
Okay, so again, uh, this was pretty simple. Bidding requirements, BR100, they've taken some of the items from the set of specifications, included it in the construction documents. So for ease of review, and also the typical construction schedule gives the, each of the contractors, the subs, an idea when they are to perform their scope of work, who comes first, who comes second. And I always recommend that, you know, if you do any project with a GC, uh, the quality of the general contractor will be shown through the quality of their construction schedule, if they have one or not. So um, that's pretty much it for this sheet, the BR100. It's, again, part of a multi-part series. We're going to be looking at a full set of construction documents from the cover sheet all the way through the electrical set. If you have any questions or concerns, please go to our website, www.sisinsam, F is in Frank, johnsonconsulting.com and uh, sign up for online office hours and we will give you additional time one-on-one -on -one to go over any information on any of the classes. But again, thank you for joining me and I will see you at the next class. Have an awesome morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are.